Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to knit the head and tail of a sheep or lamb. Sheep are intelligent, compassionate, independent, social, sensitive, hardworking, gentle, peaceful, quiet, and calm. This is a fairly simple pattern with no color changes unless you want to change color for the nose. The wool is made by doing crochet chain loops and they're very easy and only involve single crochets and chain stitches, but because there are so many of them, it does take some time. I'll show you how to do these in this video. You'll need about four ounces of DK or sport weight yarn, or about three to four times that if you're using worsted weight. You'll also need about a yard of darker contrast yarn for the eyes. I like using a black yarn with a little bit of sparkle. Remember to use knitting needles that are at least two sizes smaller than what's recommended for the yarn you're using. Some other things you'll need are stuffing, a crochet hook for the crochet loops, scissors, and a tapestry needle for sewing the seams. It's also a good idea to have some type of row counter so that you can keep track of which row you're on. The techniques and stitches you'll need for this animal are stockinette, basic increases and decreases, mattress stitch for the seams, and crochet loop stitches for the wool. Since this is a pattern video, I'm assuming that you already know how to do the basic stitches like knit, purl, knit two together, and purl two together. So I'll tell you where to do these stitches, but I won't take the time to carefully explain how to do them. The only special stitch in this pattern is the crochet loop stitch for the wool, and you'll definitely get lots of practice with it on this pattern. I'll show you how to do it in this video. Just a few more things before I get to the pattern. Don't let my knitting style throw you off. Just knit and purl in the way that's most comfortable for you. Please like and share my videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click show more in the description area for links to more videos and information. Share photos of your completed project on my Facebook page. You can find a link for that in the description area too. And finally, if you'd like a written pattern, I've given links to the shops where I sell them in the description area as well. This video focuses only on the head, tail, and wool of the sheep. All of my animals use the same body and leg patterns, so I've made separate videos for those pieces. You can find links to those videos in the description area too. Okay, let's get started with the head. In this video, I'm making an all-white sheep but it's also really fun to make a Suffolk type sheep with a black head and legs and white body. You can also make a sheep with just a black nose and I'll tell you where to make those color changes as we go. To start the head, cast on seven stitches in the color you're using for the nose. Be sure to leave enough of a yarn tail that you'll have something to sew with once you're done. On row one, just purl across without any increases or decreases. And remember that I use combination style knitting, so if my purling and knitting looks strange, that's why. Row 2 is an increase row. Knit 1 and then increase 1 and do that to the last stitch. You should have 13 stitches at the end of this row. By the way, I like to use an invisible increase known as make one. You make it by knitting into the stitch on the row just below the stitch on the right needle. On row 3, just purl across. Row 4 is another increase row with the pattern of knitting 2 and then increasing 1. Follow that pattern across to the last stitch and then knit it. And you should have 19 stitches now.
Rows 5 through 10 are basic stockinette, so just knit across on the right sides and purl across on the wrong sides without any increases or decreases. So go ahead and do that now, and I'll meet you back on row 11. Row 11 is a good place to change color back to the main color of the head if you just want the nose to be a different color. If you're not changing colors, then just purl across on row 11 without any color changes. Row 12 is another increase row. Knit the first two and increase once. Then follow the pattern of knitting three and increasing one till you get to the last two stitches and just knit them. You should have 25 stitches at this point. Purl across on row 13. On row 14, knit two and increase one, and do that pattern across to the last stitch, and then just knit it. That should give you 37 stitches. On the next three rows, rows 15, 16, and 17, just do stocking it again without increasing or decreasing, and I'll meet you back on row 18. On row 18, the pattern is knit 7 and increase 1. Do that to the last two stitches and knit them. You should have 42 stitches when you're done. Continue stockinette for rows 19, 20, 21, and 22. So I'll meet you back on row 23. On row 23, we start decreasing at the back of the head. Purl the first two, and then purl two together. Then the pattern is purl five and purl two together. Do that pattern to the last three stitches and then purl them. 
When you're done, you should have 36 stitches. Knit across on row 24. On row 25, purl the first two, then the pattern is purl two together and purl one. Do that across to the last stitch and purl it, and then you should have 25 stitches. Knit across on row 26. On row 27, purl the first stitch and then purl two together and do that across to the last two and then purl them individually. And you should have 14 stitches when you're done. Knit across on row 28. On row 29, which is the last row, purl the first stitch, then purl two together across to the last stitch and purl it. And you should have eight stitches when you're done with this row. When you're done with row 29, don't cast off. Instead, cut your yarn leaving enough that you can sew the seam and attach the head to the body with it later. Thread this tail onto a tapestry needle and then carefully thread the tail back through each stitch on the needle. Just to be safe, I like to thread the tail through those same stitches once more. Pull tight to make a nice closure. Now sew the bottom head seam a little less than halfway from the back to the neck at the bottom of the head. Next, take the tail that you left at your cast on edge and weave this through each stitch of the cast on edge to close the stitches at the nose. Then sew this end of the head seam a little less than halfway to the bottom of the head. You're trying to leave a wide enough opening at the bottom that you can push stuffing through to stuff the head.
That finishes up the knitting for the main head piece. Now we can move on to the ears. Start by casting on 7 in the ear color. Remember to leave an end for sewing with later. And I like to knit both ears at the same time so that I don't accidentally knit one longer or shorter than the other. So if you want to knit both at the same time, just find the other end of the yarn and cast on for the second ear onto the same needle. Purl across on row 1. On row 2, the pattern is knit 2 and increase 1. You'll do that 3 times and then knit the last stitch. And you should have 10 stitches. Purl across on row 3. On row 4, the increase pattern is knit 2 and increase 1. Simply knit the last two stitches and that should give you 14 stitches. Purl across on row 5. On row 6, knit 2 and increase 1 and do that to the last 2 stitches and then knit them. And that should give you 20 stitches. Purl across on row 7. On row 8, knit 3 and increase once. Do that pattern across to the last two stitches and then knit them. And you should have 26 stitches now. Purl across on row 9. Knit across on row 10. On row 11, we decrease using the pattern of purling one and then purling two together. Do that pattern until you only have two stitches left and purl each of them separately. That should give you 18 stitches. Knit across on row 12.
On row 13, purl the first stitch, then purl two together eight times, then purl the last stitch, and that should give you 10 stitches. Knit across on row 14. On row 15, purl the first stitch and then purl two together four times. Then purl the last stitch and you should have six stitches. Cut the yarn, leaving enough to sew with. Thread this tail onto a tapestry needle, and then carefully thread the tail back through each stitch on the needle. And again, I like to thread the tail back through those same stitches one more time, and then pull it tight so that the ear has a nice tip. Now fold the ear in half, and then sew the side seam back down to the cast on edge. I like to fold the ear so that there's an indentation on the front side. When we're ready to assemble all the head pieces, we'll sew the ears on the sides of the head. And now we're ready for the tail. Cast on six in the tail color. Purl across on row one. On row two, the increase pattern is knit one and increase one. Do that to the last stitch and then knit it. And you should have 11 stitches. Continue with stockinette stitch on rows 3, 4, 5, and 6, purling on the wrong sides and knitting on the right sides. And I'll meet you back on row 7. On row 7, purl the first stitch. Then purl two together to the last two stitches. Just purl those individually and you should have seven stitches. Knit across on row eight. On row nine, purl the first stitch, then purl two together three times and you should have four stitches. Cut the yarn, leaving enough to sew with. Thread this tail onto a tapestry needle, and then carefully thread the tail back through each stitch on the needle. You'll sew the tail into position on the back using the legs and back of the head to help you find the center position. I like to add the tail near the widest part of the body.
Okay, now we need to assemble all the pieces and then we'll be able to add the wool or fleece to the assembled animal. If you haven't already knitted the arms, legs, and body, you'll need to go ahead and do that now. I have an entire video dedicated to assembling the arms, legs, and body, so in this video I'm only going to focus on assembling the head. Grab some scissors, a tapestry needle, some stuffing, and a scrap of darker yarn for the eyes and nostrils. Stuff the stuffing through the little hole that you left at the bottom of the head. Be careful not to add so much that it makes the stitches spread apart. Finding the positions for the ears can be tricky. Sheep ears typically sit more on the sides of the head, and I like to start by holding them into position with my hands just to get an idea of where they look best, and then I use the yarn tails to sew just a stitch or two as a temporary stitch that I can remove easily if the position isn't quite right. I also like to sew across the bottom edge of the ear and pull that tight so that the ear has a stronger indentation. This can take some time, but it's not good to rush here because the position of the eyes and ears can make a huge difference in the final look of your animal. It helps to have a photo to look at as you're going. I include photos in my written patterns and there's a link to the shops where I sell them in the description area of this video. Now let's add the nostrils. Thread the darker thread onto your needle and then bring that up through the hole at the bottom of the head and into position. With the dark yarn, so a sort of broken V near the tip of the nose, And now let's add the eyes. For most animals, the eyes look best below the forehead and closer to the nose. I like to use a French knot for the eyes. You do that by pulling the yarn out at the position where you want the eye. Then stick your needle back in through that same place and come back out one stitch away. Be careful pulling the yarn here. You want to leave a little loop that you can stick your needle into to begin the knot. Pull the loop snug against the needle, but not too tight, and while holding it in place, wrap the yarn five to six times around the needle. Then hold the loop and wraps carefully with one hand as you pull the needle and yarn through them, creating a little circle of loops. To secure the little circle of loops into position, I like to add a couple more loops by stitching close near the bottom of the eye on the head and then coming back out through the center of the loops. I like to do this a few times until the eye feels secure on all sides. And follow these same steps to add the second eye. That's the final head detail, and now we can sew the rest of the bottom head seam. Find the original yarn that was used to sew the head seams, and then stuff all the other straggling ends inside the head, and then finish sewing the seam, leaving just an end of yarn for sewing the head to the body later. Once you've assembled all the pieces, we're ready to add the wool. You need a crochet hook for this and you'll just need to know how to do chain stitches and single crochet stitches. Start with a slip knot on your crochet hook, then stick your hook through a stitch where you want to begin adding wool. I'm starting at the top of the head, in the middle where it will be easier to hide the tail of my yarn. Then do one single crochet, and you do that by hooking the yarn and pulling it back out. And now you have two loops on your hook. Grab the working yarn again, and pull that through the, loop, the two loops on your hook. And that's it. That's a single crochet. Next, you're going to chain eight times. 
and you chain by hooking the yarn and pulling it through the loop on your hook. And that's all you have to do. You just do that eight times. Hook the yarn, pull it through the loop. Hook the yarn, pull it through the loop. After you've chained eight times, choose a spot about three stitches away from your last single crochet and single crochet again. So the pattern is single crochet, chain eight, single crochet, chain eight. Just keep doing that wherever you want the sheep's wool to be and filling it in as thick as you like it. Each chain and single crochet makes a little loop that sticks out and ends up looking like sheep's wool. The crochet loops take a long time on the sheet because they cover almost the entire body and head. You can even take the wool down so that it covers the eyes and only the nose pokes out. But I like it better when I can see the eyes so I won't go down quite that far. I found that it looks most natural if I try to be as random as possible without going in lines or patterns. You can see on this one sheep that I kept my loops in a sort of circular pattern around the body. It doesn't look bad that way, but I like the look better when there's less of an obvious pattern. On the sheep I'm making today, I'm going to be careful not to go in an obvious pattern and you'll be able to see the difference when I'm done. Okay, I'm going to stop here and I'll come back when I'm done working these crochet loops around the back of the head and body. And here's what the sheep looks like when it's all done. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I release other animal and clothing patterns. And share a photo of your completed project on my Facebook page. See you next time.